Ahmed, sir. <clears throat> uh, we'll sort of, uh, with those opening comments from our chief guest, we will start off with the, you know, the first panel. So I have the you know, pleasure of inviting the panelists to be perhaps, you know, you will sort of join in. <clears throat> so what, what I will do is I'll uh, quickly introduce you uh, to the panelists. So. So on my immediate uh, left is, is uh, Sujan. Sujat is a, a, vice, a state vice president uh, and corporate secretary of Deloitte. Uh, he oversees uh, governance, regulatory, legal compliance uh, for the India operations. He has got you know, a very wide experience uh, in, in, of, which spans over 13 years over, over various uh, you know, areas of practice, including corporate law, economic law, restructuring, employment. He's also, a, a, you know, a certified leader and manager from Harvard University. So I think uh, this is very, very uh, interesting that, you know, we have, you know, and very contextual to what we are going to be discussing. So we have someone who's, who's a lawyer and also a certified uh, a leader and a manager from Harvard. He is also the chairman of the Institute of Company Secretaries of India's Hyderabad chapter and a, you know, and a founder member of uh, another interesting, uh, I think, uh, association of in-house councils called the Indian Corporate Council Association. Uh, you know, Sujant is, is also a regular speaker and, and so we would sort of uh, welcome his, his thoughts on this. Uh, Next to him is, is Kiran. Kiran Desai is, is a, I think, uh, a known face now in, in you know, when we see you in, in several uh, seminars in India. And, and <clears throat> so welcome, Kiran. He, he is widely regarded as one of Europe's leading uh, legal practitioners in the area of uh, competition law. He advises clients on EU constitutional and administrative law. Uh, regulatory law, trade, and EU government affairs. Uh, he represents clients on, on these, and he's been doing that for the last 20 years. And he started, in, started his practice uh, in London in, in 1993. Uh, uh, he, he joined Mayor Brown in 1987 and, and was named the partner uh, after, you know, uh, within 10 years. Uh, he is being recognized in the legal uh, media group's guide to the world's leading competition in antitrust lawyers, one of the leading lawyers. He's recognized in the legal business report, reports European Legal Experts 2008 in its Belgian, EU, and competition lawyers section. section. So welcome, Kiran. We'll <clears throat> and, and next to him is, is Raman Ghosh. He is... Uh, uh, you know, a part of one of our sponsors, I think, and you know, thank you for doing that. Uh, and and uh, you know, it's, which is, you know, as you know, a con he's a senior director of, of Kroll, and and he is a, solic a qualified solicitor of England and Wales, uh, and has spent you know several years doing commercial litigation uh, for 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 you know working with Kennedy's an international law firm before he joined this current organisation. He worked on various uh, international cases involving Indian, Middle East, Russian, Greek, and German entities. Uh, his wide experience in high, uh, dealing with high value and complex investigation, uh, conducting numerous witnesses, interviews, and cross-examinations. Uh, and he's, so, so, you know, he's currently involved in, in fraud and compliance work, corruption investigation, and pre-transactional due diligence. Welcome. Uh, Roman. So, what, what, you know, it's a very interesting panel uh, which we have where you will see that we have uh, sort of an in-house lawyer who would be talking about this. We have a practicing, uh, you know, sort of uh, fraud investigation and we have someone who's in, who gets an international perspective of, of private practice. And 
so you know what we would do in, you know with the permission of everybody is that <clears throat> we'll try and really then break this up into three parts is to say that a let's sort of discuss what uh, some of the things which you know a company like Deloitte which is international how do they use technology in, in running their day-to-day -day, uh, functioning work I mean and that can really go if all of us would have faced from uh, things like an early warning system matters or things like even just trying to pay lawyers bills you know which can be really really uh, taking up a lot of our bandwidth so how do we deal with these matters and how does he do it and his organization which is an international one does it uh, lots of learnings which we we'll get from particularly from the knowledge management section from you know with from uh, from the private practice the law firm perspective and and what is it that we as as in-house lawyers can pick up with with uh, which which is done by uh, law firms better uh, and then you know we would uh, also try and get some perspectives and you know experiences as to how how you know some good or bad experiences of having worked with companies which have got some technology and uh, when, when you're doing a real work of investigation how you know and I'm, what what I have sort of would request is for for Raman to do is to tell us a few examples of very bad ones and I mean we've been all over the place because there was absolutely no technology uh, and, and some which he found are you know really good stuff and and, and therefore we, we pick up something you know as, as Vikas was saying our idea is that we, we just pick up a few notes out of at the end of today with each session and perhaps <coughs> try and see how, how, how that is helpful so with that w what I would say is that you know uh, and again the idea as we were discussing in the beginning is that it, it just should not be that these guys are good but they're not the best so therefore you know uh, let's sort of uh, also throw in your ideas and throw in your experiences and sort of uh, you know t talk to them and, and and have your interactions that's what that's why how we benefit otherwise it's just the wisdom of the three people that's not what we want to do so with that you know uh, you, you want to start off Sujat I mean as to you know, sort of an opening comment and then we will go along as people have questions sure thanks Neilanjan uh, so firstly I mean uh, I think we have got a very good context from uh, Mrs. Verma here and I think if you see from a couple of key points uh, which you mentioned uh, in terms of the key role of the in-house counsel, I mean, he talked about risk management. I mean, uh, I have the conversation uh, with my CEOs, I mean, uh, in terms of his expectation would be keep me out of trouble. That's one word what he uses. And, uh, you know, uh, I've been tracking the subject of how technology can really help us. And, you know, I was uh, this morning thinking, uh, if we work uh, with the... Uh, counterparts in an organization, I mean, if you see the role of the technology being used, I mean, actually started with the finance departments using a lot of ERP systems. Then slowly it moved on to the various other uh, departments and uh, the talent department started using technology extensively. And in last couple of years, I have been uh, saying that uh, the in-house legal uh, teams also are slowly starting, uh, you know, to use this technology. And, you know, I will try to make an analysis of how uh, the other uh, organization, in-house communities, particularly in US and UK or, and Europe, they are doing. And uh, definitely, uh, we just started on that. I mean, if you see various companies and what technology you're using, very rarely we get uh, answers. Uh, but I, I think uh, one of the key aspects uh, which uh, keeps us worry, I mean, if we are all a chief compliance officer, and I always give this example, let's say you are the chief compliance officer and you need to report to the expensive technology uh, to track that. I mean, do you face that or do you think it's sort of an uh, alien thing in yeah, I, I think, you know, just I mean, to see the show, to be able sure. to exhibit value of that. Absolutely. I think you talked a very nice point. I mean, in terms of uh, the industry expertise is also pretty important because uh, there's a lot of investment in terms of the original uh, setting up the whole thing. And it's not only the legal aspect, it's a combination of cross-functional teams, including the industry expertise. But I think the value of what we can show to the organization is, I mean, uh, the regulatory compliance monitoring uh, being an operational excellence related work. I think once we create those systems, the, uh, you know, the role of the councils, the role of the in-house councils can be more focused towards the uh, strategic aspects. And uh, it creates a robustness in the whole system. So you've been able to successfully sell yes. that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I could offer just a, sure. a practical example. Yeah. Um, uh, many years ago, um, part of the real estate law in the United Kingdom, um, where tenants um, held uh, the interest uh, through lease, uh, and the uh, tenant would need to renew the lease by serving notice. That may or may not be true 
um, in India. Um, the uh, law practice of uh, uh, property law at the time um, was quite traditional, as the law was itself rather old. And the practice was to have a logbook um, where the law firm, acting on behalf of the tenant, um, would write down in the logbook uh, the date when the notice must be served by. Mm -hmm. So this was a very robust um, system. The date was there. There was a person whose job was to look at the notebook every day and to make sure that if there were any notices that had to be sent out, they were sent out. So the system worked, except for that one element, which was the human element, which tended not to operate at 100% efficiency. And I think the efficiency and the robustness that you've identified um, has moved um, all the law practitioners in, the, in this area now to an electronic version where you know, the computer doesn't sleep, and when the date pops up, um, everyone knows, and it sends an email out to the relevant group. So it's a robust system. It also creates efficiencies, because you don't have to employ someone to um, monitor the logbook. You still need to input the data, obviously, which is going to be partly your expression. Um, but I think that to uh, address the investment element you, you identify, you're moving from the, old, the current situation of a logbook, which you can show creates mistakes from time to time, um, which can be rather costly, to uh, a technology solution which doesn't make mistakes, so it's much more robust. And yes, you've got to pay for the software or whatever it happens yeah. to be, but I think you can demonstrate to your uh, financial director that it's a worthwhile investment. That's a very simple example, but I, I'm sure that um, the advocacy is there where the software is much more complicated, much more expensive, and the systems uh, uh, that they're addressing. Yeah. So that sort of segues me into the next question to you, is that you, know, you, you deal with... Uh, one is that I don't even want to sort of start off by saying what do you guys do, because you guys really do that <clears throat> as, you know, do it very well. It's a part of your, you know, uh, you're a revenue earner, yeah. so therefore, you know, it makes sense for you to make it cost-effective to deliver those, you know, uh, sort of opinions and, and, and vices. But we are not, we strive to get there as, as lawyers in-house. That sort of second year would be also in similar scenarios mm -hmm. and, and leading uh, teams which have got large uh, teams. Uh, and there are some of who have modest teams. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so it would be interesting to see what have you seen in your clients uh, and, and, you know, and sort of how, how can we sort of do this better in terms of technology. Okay. I mean, I think one, one opening remark I, I would uh, offer is um, that uh, I think that this particular um, audience, um, many of whom are catching up with me in terms of grey hairs, etc., um, uh, have got to grasp the technology uh, solution, um, not the least because the younger members of your team are probably already ahead of you um, in understanding how the technology works. Um, you know, my daughter looks at me as if I'm not on this planet when I try to fiddle with my iPad and um, just don't get it. You know, she get, absolutely gets it. And this is one of the uh, challenges of culture, if you will, the generational challenge that uh, I think you have to address. I also think um, it's very um, reassuring that we all actually naturally adopt technology without um, too much uh, persuasion. We've gone through that time when there's very strange machine that people refer to as the fax machine. Um, and there was a time when you would have to justify to the finance director why you want to buy a fax machine. Then you had whole rooms of fax machines, and it was a nightmare of a job feeding hundreds of pages through the fax machine. And, of course, it would just go wrong about the 450th page. Um, but that time has you know, been and gone. But we've, and we've adopted technologies very easily. Um, but when I look around, just to be very responsive to your question, at... Uh, the, the spread of client responses. Um, some of the larger corporations, some of the more sophisticated corporations, um, are not necessarily the best at, um, uh, in the practice or the use of, of technology. Um, some of them uh, try to develop it themselves. Most tend to develop with, with um, consultants uh, like Deloitte and others who can develop uh, with them. And actually, when I think about... Um, certain elements like virtual data rooms, um, setting those up. Yes, there are standard software, but setting them up 
um, is actually a challenge to make it work for you. Um, in terms of um, document tracking, I think this is one of the elements you mentioned. It's, um, I won't name names, but a very well-known international corporation um, phoned me up not so long ago in relation to a transaction um, that was uh, done by my firm um, in 1995, and they were having a significant problem, um, but they couldn't actually find um, any of the key documents. Um, and we were able, through relatively simple keystrokes, to find where it was and to pull it out of uh, uh, cold storage and to hand the uh, copies over to the clients. Um, it's one thing that I think that we should all be aware of. Um, the churn, the turnover of staff in the legal profession is um, really quite high compared to even 10 years ago. Um, to find, for example, in private practice, someone like myself who's basically stayed in the same firm for over 20 years is quite rare. So what does this happen in a practical level? The practical problem is the business person who negotiated the contract five years ago and the lawyer that was helping probably isn't at the company anymore. And so you have orphan documents where no one probably knows where they are. You know, they're in that cupboard, I think. That was, you know, that was Jane's room. It's probably in that cupboard. Um, matter tracking, which is what you were referring to, is one of the, um, not just an efficiency point, but it's becoming even um, a vital element in, let's call it the evidential war. If you don't have the document to demonstrate a particular uh, aspect of your argument and the other side has their document, you're probably going to lose because the weight of evidence um, is very much in favour of the other party. But, but may I just stop you there? I mean, perhaps, you know, from, from again, let, yeah. tell me about the Indian context that, you know, let's say I have all of these documents scanned and put yeah. up somewhere in some fancy place of document management. But our Indian courts may not accept that scanned copy of the document. So, I mean, it's, it's of little value. Well, that's interesting because if, if, uh, if I take the UK courts or American courts, for example, there's um, something of a mixed uh, reception to that as well. But the general view is you're better off having something than nothing. Uh, and that's, you know, that sounds a little bit too simplistic maybe, but it is definitely the case that we have found, um, even in certain courts in the States where they don't particularly like scanned uh, documents, you will be in a better position than, the, than, than if you don't have the documentation. But I think that uh, to move on to a few, just a few other examples that I can offer, because I've talked about matter tracking, I think it is... Um, essential uh, for, for, for practice um, so, today. In the matter tracking, when you say, do, do, is there an interface between the company and the, and the external lawyer in the matter tracking, or is there, it, there is it an be. internal matter? Uh, there can be. I mean, mostly they're internal. And, you know, matter tracking is uh, Project X will have um, a matter because the trouble with Project X is um, 10 years ago um, it was called Project X, and now no one can actually remember what Project X was. So that's why you give it a matter number. Um, and then certainly in, in our law firm, and I'm, I'm sure this is true for many others, every email that's going out, every email that comes in, every document that's created um, has automatically tagged with this matter. It's automatically filed electronically. That makes our life simpler, so that's an efficiency point again. Um, and it makes the system more robust. So that's not actually a software package that's very expensive. Uh, strangely enough, it's, it is very expensive for a multinational law firm because there are just many things to pull together. If you're a small legal department, um, it's going to be actually a relatively cheap solution um, for you to get better uh, at matter, uh, matter tracking. Um, in terms of perhaps a few other points, I'll just, I'll just offer by way of um, a, a survey or review of, of clients. Um, some clients now are, because evidence is, is the key and robustness, um, they are recording all telephone calls, particularly the banks and the financial institutions, in part because their regulator requires them to do so. Um, that's something that, let's say, more traditional corporations are thinking of doing. Um, it creates an enormous amount of data, but then you need specialist software to grab the data, uh, and that's where um, you guys, for example, uh, come in um, with specialist software to essentially forensic software to find the information. So there's a lot more information out there because everything that's digital, you know, it's kept. You think you've deleted it on the computer.